And how does one get ballot access? What does that process entail? Carrying petitions around and getting a lot of signatures. And you have to do that with various constraints on it. You know, like in some, you have to have every petition sheet notarized by a notary public. Um, in some states, you have to be from that state. You can't go help your neighbor's state uh, to carry petitions. They're just different uh, picky little nitpicky rules uh, intended to undercut you, you know, and the Democrats recently announced that they were going to try to complicate our uh, ballot access process. It's by looking for those little rules and trying to trip us up. And usually they make stuff up. And, you know, I don't know if you followed what happened in Matt Ho's campaign. Yeah, we had we've had him on. But for <clears throat> people who didn't see those episodes, can you just summarize that? Sure. So Matt was running as a Green for Senate in North Carolina. And uh, the uh, Democrats Im impersonated Greens and started calling people whose names that they saw were on the ballot and uh, telling them as members of the Green Party, supposedly, to please take their names off the petition. And they didn't have very good reasons for that, but they were trying to strong arm people into getting off, uh, getting, uh, withdrawing their names. And that's what they do. They usually challenge our signatures. When Ralph Nader was running in 2000, well, he ran many times. I think this was his 2004 campaign. They had simultaneous lawsuits trying to throw him off the ballot in something like 20 different lawsuits at once, which were being illegally coordinated by Mark Elias, the head attorney, who is still their head kind of, um, you know, dirty tricks uh, attorney, who, again, will be on the case doing what he can do you know, it ought to be absolutely illegal. Right. You know, they should be in jail for doing this. This is as, you know, as authoritarian as anything that goes on in Russia. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's outrageous. And this is what they do. And they're so shameless about it. They, you know, allow this to be announced that they're hereby going to challenge us through dirty tricks. So I'd say if you care about democracy, you know, that, that on principle ought to be reason to lend a hand here and help us get on the ballot so that we can actually have a politics of integrity to vote for. And when you say it's ex <clears throat> certain states are expensive, what makes a state more or less expensive? So like in California. Which is a terrible thing to even say out loud that ballot access is expensive, but yeah. Exactly. I know. It's like buy your way on the ballot. That's really what it right. is. You know, we have a election system that's completely controlled by big money. So in California, it costs many millions of dollars uh, to get on the ballot. And if you... If you are already an established party and you already have some threshold number of people who are registered as Greens, which we happen to do, we have that in California. We have ballot status as a party, so we don't have to petition in, in California. We already have it. Um, but like the Democrats have that everywhere uh, in California. If you don't have ballot status, it will cost you many millions of dollars. Basically, because it is a big operation. If you, even if you have trained volunteers who can carry the petitions and they know how to gather these signatures efficiently, and in California, I don't know what the numbers are because we haven't had to carry petitions there, but it's certainly tens of thousands, and it may be a whole lot more than that. It could even be fifty, sixty, a hundred thousand. I'm not sure. Don't, don't quote me on that. But it's a lot. In New York, where the uh, ballot requirements were. Uh, uh, Kind of surreptitiously sweat, uh, snuck into a ballot, a, um, a budget bill, I think, by Cuomo when he was very pissed at the Greens uh, because we ran a very successful campaign against him that forced him then to have to make compromises uh, to regulate fracking. You know, and that's one of the benefits here. You don't have to win the office in order to win power that you can then uh, yield. But because he was pissed, he sort of snuck this into the um, legislation that raised the ballot requirement to something like 45,000 signatures in a shorter period of time, in six weeks. But when you say 45,000 signatures, they have to be validated signatures. So if the name is incorrect, it doesn't have a middle initial, whereas the uh, voter registrar has a middle initial, or your address has changed, right. or they can't re read it, they'll, they'll strike that, they'll throw it out. So as a general rule, you want to have twice as many signatures. So that means you have to collect 90,000 signatures in six weeks. That takes a huge number of trained volunteers and then a lot of coordination because sometimes there's a very elaborate process. You have to get them 
uh, validated either by the Secretary of State. Sometimes you have to take them back to the various uh, counties and get them validated at the counties and then pick them all up and bring them to the Secretary of State. It's an incredibly make work uh, kind of process, which is mainly intended just to keep competitors off the ballot. That's how our system works. And it can be changed. It should be changed. And, you know, it's part of our uh, green agenda for, you know, reclaiming the promise of democracy, get the money out, reestablish debates, you know, create open forums, um, you know, make ballot access accessible, actually, not these outrageous prohibitive rules, and implement ranked choice voting so that fear cannot be used to extort votes, which is how the system works right now. It's extremely anti-democratic to suggest that you're a spoiler right. if you enlarge people's choices. If we don't have choices in our election, it's not a democracy. So it's like shocking that they they assert this propaganda, uh, you know, just without without a shred of conscience and say, you know, you don't dare do that. You have to take marching orders from the uh, duopoly that's been throwing you under the bus, you know, and please don't think about what I'm saying here, you know, because it's just, it's nonsense. Right. It does seem like this really is a moment with, with genocide. It is a moment for people who have previously held their noses and voted for the lesser evil. That's not working for certain people anymore. I've seen many people who were always lesser of two evil voters uh, abandon that because of the genocide. They just can't bring themselves to vote for Biden anymore. Yeah, yeah, so there absolutely. Is like this, this is an opportunity here. It's really important not to limit yourself to abandoning Biden. You know, right. you have to join Jill or yeah. join somebody. You know, it's not okay to just silence yourself. And they would like you to think that. They would like you to think that the solution is, oh, just don't contaminate yourself by voting for, you know, a, a, a genocide Joe. No, you have to actually have an affirmative vote. Democracy needs a moral compass. We don't make progress unless we have an affirmative vote. If you're just voting against who you despise the most, right. or, you know, just like not participating in a, um, in a poison system, that doesn't do it. That actually doesn't move us forward. And that's what they would love. That's what they love. Remember the words of Alice Walker, that the biggest way people give up power is by not knowing we have it to start with. We have power here to win this election just based on opposition to genocide. Throw in student debt and you've got another 44 million people right there. We could fix student debt. We could fix health care. You know, there are 100 million people right now who have uh, medical debt, which also could be fixed even without fixing the health care. I mean, there are just so many solutions galore that we don't touch with a 10 foot pole because it's been, you know, established by academics all over the place. You know, there's all the studies, if you want them, that uh, what drives the system is the power of money. It's not the power of our need or the power of our vision, the power of what we actually can accomplish. That is real. And it's important for us to have the courage of our convictions, especially at a, at a moment like this, when, you know, the world is really going to hell in a handbasket. We really need to stand up for the way that we need to go. I'm just saying that that, that in itself is an opportunity that people are, are no longer feeling obliged or obligated True. to vote for the, the lesser evil that opens them up to exploring alternatives. And I do think it's true if you're going to be not voting for Biden, I'm not voting for Biden, but if you're not voting for Biden, it seems a waste to not vote for someone else. You should be sending a message that way and empowering a challenge to the duopoly. 